Welcome back to Gruber Motor Company. I'm Pete Gruber. This car was sold at an auction. It was involved in a collision and uh, the insurance company deemed it as being unrepairable. And the reason that the insurance companies do that with Tesla Roadsters is parts are very hard to find. For example, the body parts, although this was originally a Lotus Elise, ended up being a highly modified Lotus Elise with custom body panels and custom body parts. So you can't go to Lotus to get these body panels and the vendors that used to make the panels for the Roadster are long gone. So this particular car um, sustained some damage in the passenger rear quarter panel. And um, on the surface, it looks like it's repairable what we're not certain of yet is if there's any frame damage. And we're going to dig into that. So the body damage, at least from the front here, is quite repairable. This is a carbon fiber body. Um, there's some holes in the door, holes in the front fender. The big problem here is going to be a portion of the rear passenger quarter panel completely missing. And again, these parts are not off the shelf. You, you can't go to Tesla and buy them anymore. So this is going to be a challenge and another donor car is going to be involved in this level of repair. So what spooked the insurance company was not just the missing quarter panel here, but if you come around and take a look at this uh, power electronics module, it got uh, damaged from the collision and this is the electronics portion of the propulsion system. So the power electronics module is the inverter that converts all of that DC to three-phase AC and it's full of circuit boards and all types of electronics. With damage like this, it's a foregone conclusion that the car is no longer drivable and that a fairly expensive repair to the electronics needs to take place. The problem there with the Tesla Roadster is this big giant box here, this inverter has been out of production since 2008. So, this power electronics module, or this three-phase inverter, got hit, actually crumpled some of the electronics, and you can see that there are a number of components here that have been bent and have been crumpled and pushed into the, uh, the other portion of the electronics. In the lab here is where we repair these power electronic modules. So that PEM, that power electronics module, in that uh, collision damaged car will eventually come in here and we will start to do a repair similar to what we're doing with this power electronics module here. And as you can see, these are the components that got crumpled and crushed inside that PEM in that uh, collision damaged car. We had a heads up about this car from the previous owner who um, was looking to get the body rebuilt and ship the PEM to us or the car to us so we can rebuild the electronics. He actually mentioned to us that he was able to drive the car after the accident, even with this crumpled batch of electronics here. Then the car went to a body shop, the insurance company got involved, they ended up deciding that it is not worth repairing, they totaled it, it went to auction, got sold at auction, and the heads up that we had was that this car was going to have a good battery pack, which is typically not the case when you buy a salvage roadster, because if they don't get a charge, for two months, they go into a state called bricked, which is it kills the roadster, it becomes dead. And the only way to revive it within the first six months after a bricked state is to have a recovery done, which is one of the things that we do here at Gruber Motor Company. So we knew that this battery was going to be good because we showed them how to pull the service plug on this to shut down the battery. What we weren't certain about was the quality of the PEM. So we ended up bidding on the car. We won the car. We were the high bidder. Then the insurance company comes along and says, oh, well, we had a reserve in mind, which sometimes happens. The reserve was much higher than the um, successful bid award that we entered. There was a bit of negotiation, and finally we bought the car for way more than a total roadster normally would sell for at auction. So the reason we were motivated to hang in there and um, negotiate with the insurance company, despite having won the car, first of all, at the auction, was that we knew that it had a good battery and we weren't 100% sure how this power electronics module was going to look when it got here. 
So these cars generally at auctions get pretty beat up. In this case, for example, you see a bunch of duct tape stuck all over the car. The car was actually much cleaner and almost pristine before it went to the, uh, to the auction or got into the accident. We cleaned it up since then. We took some measurements. We looked at the state of the PIM and the charging circuits and determined that this car may just charge. So we ended up taking a charge cable And this is the charge port door on a Tesla Roadster. If you've got life, it's going to illuminate. So we plugged it in. You can see it's bent a bit. Pushed it forward, and when it comes blue like that, that means that the PEM is responding, or the charge circuit is seeing a charge cable. You heard that first click. That's the pre-charge turning on. And if you see an amber glow, that means it is now taking a charge. So this car came in with locked wheels. We ended up having to put it on dollies in order to move it around, which have now been removed. After a successful charge overnight, we got in the car and we found that the electronics were alive. And what you'll see on that little screen is the result of a successful charge. What it's telling us here is that we have 172 miles range and what we haven't done yet was fired up the car to see if it will drive despite that mangled inverter or power electronics module. So we're all going to witness what this car can do at this point. Okay we've turned it on. It looks like the car wants to move so let's see what happens. I put it in gear So we're going to call this our miracle car. Despite having electronics that are mangled, this car will actually run and drive. What's next for this car is we'll do a thorough inspection, take a look at the frame, take a look at the suspension components, and determine whether this is a restorable car or whether this will become a donor car and put other roadsters that badly need parts back on the road. Thank you for joining us. I'm Pete Gruber. Make sure to watch us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, <laughs> Twitter. Oh my God, we got so many of them now. That's where I need the script. Thank you for joining us.